A doctor dee, doctor dee, doctor dee. Doctor dee, doctor dee, doctor dee. A doctor dee, doctor dee, doctor dee. Explain stuff. Hey everyone, Dr. D here, and in this video I just want to quickly show you how to put together your enzyme graph for your assignment, enzyme lab assignment. Now, uh, remember that this graph covers lab 6, uh, the enzymes lab. Now let's hop to activity. The first activity is concentration. You want to skip that. Now, activity 6-2 of lab assignment uh, 6. 6-2. Notice how this activity covers temperature effects on peroxidase activity. We did the assignment at various temperatures, right? 0 degrees Celsius, 23 degrees Celsius, which is essentially room temperature, 40, 50, and 100 degrees Celsius. And what this assignment assumed was that you would do the peroxidase enzyme run at these various temperatures, and you would get the the rates, the enzyme reaction rates using a spectrophotometer. Now let's say we did this activity and these were our results with the spectrophotometer where we measured absorbance at wavelength 475 over time for 120 seconds. Let's say the, the 120 second mark was right around here. These were our results. Let's say these were our results. So you can see this was our rate at 0 degrees C. Our rate was 0 0.00095 absorbance per second. That was the slope of this line. Remember the M value means the slope of this straight line. What does this value mean? 0 0.00095. That means how much did the ab absorbance change per second? So in this case, every second, the absorbance went up by this value, 0 0.00095. So when we repeated the experiment at 23 degrees C, which is room temperature, notice how the slope was steeper the slope was higher. In this case, the slope was 0 0.00265. So, what does that mean, 0 0.00265? That's higher slope, which means more enzyme activity. We repeated this at 40 degrees C, and notice that this gave us the steepest slope. This gave us 0 0.00335 absorbance per second, so we can say that the steepest slope, the highest value slope, uh, and therefore the highest enzyme activity occurred at 40 degrees C. Now at 50 degrees C, you had a more shallow slope. And at 100 degrees C, it was essentially the slope was zero. So if I were to ask you, what at what temperature does peroxidase function best, what would you say? Well, I would hope you would say the peroxidase functions best where it, you know, the slope is the highest. That, that would mean that the hydrogen peroxide is being catalyzed to water the fastest, and the gaiacol is being oxidized to tetragiacol the fastest. That's why the color change occurred, and because the color change occurred so quickly, the tube turned faster, faster. The uh, d I mean, the, tu the tube turned brown faster, and you got a higher slope. Remember, as the cuvette turns brown, that brown pigment blocks more and more of that light, giving you a steeper slope. If the tube never turned brown, well, as in the case of this 100 degrees C slope, 
looks like the tube never turned brown. Why would you assume that at 100 degrees C, if we boil basically, essentially that means boiling temperature, right? If we boil the enzyme, why would you expect to see, why would you have seen a flat slope, a slope of essentially zero? Why do you think that is? Well, remember that enzymes are usually proteins, and proteins need to be folded correctly to function correctly. So at 100 degrees C, you probably denatured your protein. You probably denatured the peroxidase enzyme, which is a protein. And therefore, if the protein is denatured, it's unfolded, it's not going to fold uh, correctly, it's not going to function correctly. And guess what? You're not going to be converting the, the gaiacol to tetragaiacol. You're not going to be breaking down the hydrogen peroxide to water. Anyway, this is a little bit of background. Hopefully you understand now what this graph is showing you. The steeper the slope, the higher the enzyme reaction rate. The flatter, the, the closer the slope is to zero, the slower the enzyme reaction rate. And if it's completely flat, like at 100 degrees C, that means the enzyme is not functioning at all. Okay, so what I need you to do for the enzyme graph assignment worth, I believe it's 50 points, you could check your syllabus, is to graph these results as a bar graph. I want you to graph these results right here as a bar graph. So what do I mean? I mean, you're going to take these values. You see 0 0.00335. That's your value for 40 degrees. 0 0.00265 absorbance per second. That's your value for 23 degrees. I want you to take these values, and I want you to plot them as a bar graph. Okay? But you're not going to have absorbance over time. I want you to plot them on a new graph, uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. I want to see something that looks more like this. Let me grab this. Okay. What, uh, I want to see enzyme reaction rate on this side, on the y-axis. And I don't want time on the x-axis. What, what do you think I want? That's right, temperature. 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 OK, I want temperature on the x-axis. I want enzyme reaction rate on the y-axis. And of course, it's not going to be a line graph. It's going to be a bar graph. But you're going to have how many bars? One, two, three, four, five bars. You're going to have the five bars from 0 degrees to 100 degrees. And those bars are going to represent the enzyme reaction rate and the temperature. Now, I also want the proper units. I want you to put in the proper units. What are the proper units for enzyme reaction rate, do you think? And I'm going to give you a hint. The units are not M. Okay, M it just represents the slope. It does not mean uh, it's not a proper unit for this, uh, for this graph. Okay, so I want you to put in the, the correct, I want you to put in the correct units, okay, uh, for enzyme reaction rate. So I'll leave you to figure out what that is, units. And then temperature. What are the units for temperature? Hmm. What are the units for temperature? So put in the correct units. Is it Kelvin? Is it degrees Fahrenheit? Is it degrees C, right? So put in the pr proper units there for temperature. Put in the proper units for uh, enzyme reaction rate. Okay. And of course, you're not going to have lines. You're going to have, oops. You're not going to have lines. You're going to have bars, right? You're going to have little bars. So uh, you're going to label those bars, right? So let me show you. 
So you're going to have little labels here, zero degrees, right? And then you're going to have 40 degrees, and you're going to have a bar for zero degrees. You're going to have a bar for 23 degrees, a bar for 40 degrees. And then your graph needs a title at the top. Okay, this is very important. Your graph needs a title at the top, a graph title. Let me explain a graph title real quick for you. Here, at the top, you'll need a graph title. And it can't be graph title, right? That's not um, a good title at all. A, a, a proper scientific graph title should be descriptive and yet concise, very descriptive. So think about what do you need to title this graph in order to, let's say, explain this graph to someone who didn't do this experiment, right? What are the things that you need to add to this title so that the graph makes sense to someone who wasn't even there for lab? Um, so for example, you can't leave out uh, enzyme reaction. You can't leave that term out, right? Because that's what we were assessing. You can't leave out temperature. You can't leave out temperature, right? What else can you not leave out? Because uh, if you leave out these terms from the title, people don't know what you did, right? what you were experimenting. So think about that. Put a proper scientific title for this graph. And the, like I said, the proper scientific uh, title explains what you did on this ex for this experiment, you know, and explains the graph nicely. So you've got a y-axis. You properly labeled x-axis with labels, okay? You make, don't forget your units here. The, what are the correct units for temperature? What are the correct units for enzyme reaction rate? You're going to have one, two, three, four, five. You're going to have five bars, and you're going to have a proper graph title. Now, once you f complete that, uh, please email me this graph, and it will count as that assignment, the enzyme graph assignment. Pretty straightforward. I just want you to properly label a graph showing the results from the temperature assignment activity, I should say, of the enzyme lab six. All right, guys, uh, let me know if you have any questions, but hopefully this made it pretty straightforward as to what you need to do, a bar graph uh, demonstrating the results from the temperature assignment. And use these values here, please. Uh, these are the values to use, okay, on the right. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.